Well, hi there again, everybody. Welcome back to the Baseball Replay Journal, where today we have another 1908 game for you using the Skeetersoft MP3 system. We have here for you the uh, New York Giants, who are 2-0 at the Philadelphia Phillies, who are 0-2. Um, now, after doing a little bit of uh, thinking about this and uh, thinking about what's working and what's not working, I've made a couple of changes. You can see I have, uh, for our dice cam here, I have a little uh, tripod set up, so things should be a little bit more uh, stable, easier to watch. Um, and uh, we're making a couple of other little changes here there before soon, before too long, we should be able to have a uh, new microphone in, which should make things a little bit easier and should make it easier to hear my voice. And uh, we'll just keep making improvements. Now, the first uh, roll here today is a, a 32 here from Mike Donlin, leadoff hitter for uh, the Giants. And that's a 26 roll. And that's a ground ball to second base over Knab. Knab makes the throw over to first base uh, to Bransfield. And there's one away for the Giants. And uh, just like that, Larry Doyle comes up. Doyle rolls a 12, and uh, the 12 brings up a 24 result with a little E. For the little E, we do the secondary roll. There will be no error. And it winds up being a ground ball over to Doolin at short, who throws him out two away. So I see him more now. He rolls a 32. It's going to be, as we all know, a 26. That goes over to Canab again. That's a uh, ground ball again to the second baseman. One, two, three, go the Giants. And here comes Eddie Grant. Eddie Grant for the Philadelphia Phillies rolls 26, and that's a 32 fly out to right field, and that's uh, Mike Donlin out there makes the play, one away, auto knave now. He rolls a 13. Sometimes I have to look over there. It's not exactly the best viewing angle for me, but this will improve a little bit, especially once we have the new microphone set up here. So things will continue to change as we go forward. At any rate, Knave takes the walk. Joe McGinnity, Iron Man, uh, gives up a walk here in the early going. Um, we don't have his nickname on there, unfortunately, but it's all right. That brings up John um, Titus with uh, one man out, one man on, and Knave over at first base. And I think we're going to try to hit and run here for Philadelphia, see what happens. Rolls a 55, which is an A, which I think is good in hit and run, and it is. That's a uh, single there to right field for uh, Titus. Knave goes to third. Phillies have something cooking here with one out, runners on first and third, and Sherry McGee coming up. And uh, the question now is do you hit and run or do you just swing away? With the possibility of the double play, I think we're going to hit and run again. Let's see what happens. Roll is a 45, and uh, there's going to be a uh, strike, actually. McGee is caught out stealing. <laughs> so that's, uh, or I'm sorry, not McGee. Uh, Titus is caught stealing, and uh, that's the risk that you take. And boy, that was probably a poor decision on my part. You can let me know in the comment section what you think about that. Next roll is a 15, and that brings up an 11. That's a single for Sherry McGee, and as uh, Kitty Bransfield comes up, he steals second base. That leaves McGee on second base now. One nothing Phillies, two outs here, bottom of the first inning. The roll is a 26 for a 27 result. As always, it's a ground ball at the third base, and Art Devlin gets it, throws over to uh, Tenney at first, and that is the end of that. One run, two hits for the Phillies, and it's one nothing Philadelphia, top of the second inning. And here is Devlin. And he rolls a 34, and there's a little fly ball to center field. I was bracing myself for that E. You can see how much NP3 I've played. Um, but uh, the E didn't come into uh, play because that error rating um, didn't come into play. It wouldn't have been an error normally. Next roll is a 32 for Fred Tenney, 26. And there's a little ground ball to second base. And Knob's, Knave's got it, sorry. And he throws to first, and that's the second out. Next one, there's a uh, 65 over to Al Bridwell, and that's a little pop-up, a 35, as usual. That's a pop-up over to Grant for the Phillies. There's out number three, and we go to the bottom of the second inning. Fred Osborne now. Roll is a 44 for Fred. That's an 8, which is a base hit because Joe McGinnity, as you can see if you're watching this, has a C. And traditionally, especially with the runner on first, the C winds up being a base hit against, or a 8 is a base hit against a C. Mickey Doolin now, and now is where we come to 1908 because we are going to bunt with Mickey Doolin despite the fact that we have a one nothing lead here in the bottom of the second. And uh, one look at his statistics will tell you why. If we don't bunt with him, he's not likely to do anything. Of course, what happens here is we roll a 22, get a 7. 7 would have been a base hit normally. Instead, it's a little bunt over to the first baseman, to Tenney, who throws over to Doyle covering for the out. Um, give the uh, sacrifice to Doolin. That brings up Red Doolin, not to be confused with Doolin, with one out now. The uh, Philadelphia catcher is up. Rolls of 15 good rolls for the Phillies so far. There's a single to left, and uh, the uh, <clears throat> runner scores, uh, I believe. Uh, no, runner's out at home. My apologies. Um, and uh, Doolin then winds up stealing second base um, as uh, Frank Corden comes up. 
And so a single left field and uh, the uh, play is made by Shannon out there on left. Throws over to Bresnahan and gets his man. They get uh, Osborne there at the plate and Duin winds up replacing him on second base with the stolen base. You might be wondering if you're a uh, veteran of Appa in similar games, how in the world Duin can steal a base if he's got an S? Well, that's the magic of the MP3 system. Uh, stolen bases do not necessarily, or I'm sorry, um, F and S ratings are not necessarily all about speed. They can be about uh, the number of runs you've scored. Frank Corden now, and he rolls a 6 2 is a 13. Simple strikeout. That's the third out of the inning. Phillies get nothing out of that um, scoring chance. They've had four hits so far, left two on base. On we go to the top of the third. Giants looking for their first hit, and up is Spike Shannon, who had that excellent throw, and he hits a fly ball over to center field. We roll a 34, get the 44 result, and that's Osborne making the play. The reason why it's not an error is because that 16, I forget who that corresponds to. I think it's Titus in right field who has a 3. Um, anyway, you have to look at the boards to know all of that. We don't worry about that too much here. Roger Bresnahan then rolls a 22. It's a 7, and that is a base hit, despite the fact that cordon has got that B. A 7 is kind of a strong hit number. That brings up Joe McGinnity, and you know that we're bunting with Joe, of course. Pitcher McGinnity is up, the Iron Man, runner on first base, and uh, we're going to see how this bunt goes. Rolls a 65 for 35, and uh, that ends up being a double play. That's a bunt that doesn't get past um, the catcher, Doolin. Throws over to uh, shortstop to Doolin, and then Doolin goes over to Knabe, who was covering a first base because of the uh, rotation, and it's one of those sort of miracle double plays off of a bunt. Not what you want to see if you're the offensive manager. That ends that inning for the Giants. Nothing doing, and we go to the bottom of the third inning for the Phillies. And uh, the first roll there is a 14, and that's a little 43. That E rating comes out, though, because this is left field, and Shannon has only a 2 for his fielding rating. And the roll is a 16, and guess what that means? Uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, not the 16. It goes over to 19, which is third base. My apologies. That's an error on the third baseman, Art Devlin. <clears throat> not sure why I was looking. I think I was looking at the last player card. At any rate, that puts Eddie Grant on first base, and we're going to try to hit and run again, despite the fact that we had a bad time of it last time. And uh, Otto Knave strikes out, and that's that strike him out, throw him out, double play. And again, that's the risk that you take. You can't hit and run too often in this game. Next one up is John Titus, who has a 33 for a 7. And that 7 result gets him a base hit, and that puts him there on first base. Two outs now, bottom of the third inning. one nothing Phillies. There's a 45 roll from Jerry McGee, which is a 14. But, of course, that is only a ball, and that's because Joe McGinnity has that Z right next to his C rating, and that limits the number of walks he can give up. McGee's next roll is an 11 for a 0, and that means we go double column fishing. Second roll is a 22, which is going to be a 5, which in this case, uh, with a runner on first base, means a home run. Now, you can uh, think about this however you want. You can make it into an inside-the-park home run if you want, or you can imagine him hitting the ball over the fence. Um, I haven't done my research here before this game. I can't remember what the ballpark that the Phillies played in in 1908 was like. Um, I should start looking this up before each game. Uh, it's a little bit easier with games like Diamond Mind where I have the ballpark right in front of me. At any rate, it um, doesn't matter either way because uh, it winds up being a home run for McGee. Um, whether it's inside the park or outside the park, I'll let you decide. And that brings up Kitty Bransfield now with uh, two outs. Uh, three nothing Phillies. Rolls a 23 for a 32. Fly out to right field. And Donlin's got a beat on it, and that does that. But two runs for the Phillies, and we go to the top of the four, three nothing Philadelphia. And the first rule here for Mike Donlin is a 53, and uh, that is going to be a 15, which is a fly ball to uh, McGee in left field, and he makes the put out because he has that three rating that gives him what we call fielding column one. That's the first out of the inning. Next up is Larry Doyle. He rolls a 22. The 22 is a 7 for a base hit. And that makes him the runner on first base for Cy Seymour. And the Giants now, down by 3, are going to try the hit and run. It's either hit and run or bunt from here. Uh, Seymour rolls a 35, which is a 9. And uh, that winds up being a ground out to the shortstop. Uh, goes over to Doolin, who throws over to first to make the play. I know what it says here under the board description. The reason why we can't really trust that is because Corridon has got a B. You can see it's against A and B, A and C, A, B, or C pitchers. This eight turns in, or I'm sorry, this nine turns into this uh, ground out uh, short to first. This is another reason why when you're trying to make your strategy as you play NP3, you have to be careful using the hit and run. If you overuse it too much, you end up looking like me. Uh, next batter up is Art Devlin, rolls a 24. 24 is a 13 for a strikeout, and just like that, Corridon is able to get out of another inning. No damage done, 3-0 Phillies, bottom of the fourth inning. And up first is Fred Osborne, 
Osborne rolls a 34 for a 44, which is a fly ball over to Seymour in center field, and he makes the play. And the little E doesn't come up. It's not the 44 that triggers this. It's the 17. 17, which I think is right field, which would be Mike Donlin, who has a 3. And what this means is that even if we got the little air roll and it was right, because he's got a fielding uh, 1 because of his 3 rating, that 17 wouldn't be an air anyway, so there's no need to roll the dice. It's complicated, and it's even more complicated if you play with the boards instead of with the computer. Computer just does it all for you. You don't have to think about it. Mickey Doolin now rolls a 24, gets a 13. That's a strikeout for McGinnity. McGinnity's third strikeout of the game. And uh, that brings up Red Doohan, the catcher, and he rolls a 31 for a 9. That's going to be a little pop-up uh, to uh, our Devlin, and he makes the play. We go to the top of the fifth inning, still 3 nothing Phillies. First man up, Fred Tenney, rolls a 46 for a 13. That's a strikeout. For most players, it's going to be a strikeout. Frank Cordo now has two strikeouts. Different than 1949, no walks in this one. 61 is what Al Bridwell rolls. It's a, a strike. It's a 39. 61-39, not a very common number. That's what we call an unusual play result number. Next roll is a 43, which is a 29, much more usual. Little ground ball over to Frank. Frank Cordon grabs it, throws over to first base to Bransfield, and that is the second out of the inning. And here comes Spike Shannon. Spike Shannon now rolls 31 for a 14, and that is a walk. Cordon has no way of preventing that walk. He has not got the double Z or the triple Z, as you can see there on the monitor, the double Z or triple Z that it would take to prevent that walk from happening. Up comes Bresnahan, but as you can see, there are two outs, and uh, the uh, catcher, uh, Roger, rolls a 12 for a 24. Um, now, this might be something. This is uh, Doolin who's in question here, the shortstop, because he's got an 18 there on the 53. The E rating roll is a 13, and that is going to turn into an error. That is an error on Doolin, the shortstop, and that sends Shannon over to third base. Here comes McGinnity. Now you're thinking, wow, maybe do we think about pinch hitting? Not on your life, buddy, not in 1908. McGinnity pitches, uh, hits for himself. He pitches for himself, too. Hits for himself, gets an 11 uh, roll for a 7 result, which is a fly ball over to center field. Osborne's got to be on it. That's the third out of the inning, and the Giants are still uh, scoreless. And up comes Frank Cordon here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Gordon rolls a 55 for a 9. That's a pop out to uh, the third baseman. Our Devlin's got it, makes the play one away. Here comes Eddie Grant. Eddie Grant rolls a 63, which is a fly ball this time over to Shannon and left. That's the second out. Easy as that, easy as pie. The third uh, batter is Otto Knabe, rolls a 21 again for a 30. It's another fly ball out to Shannon. That is Shannon's second put out of the inning. And one, two, three, go to the Phillies. We go to the top of the sixth inning with Mike Donlin coming up. Donlin, first batter, rolls a 43 for a 29. 29 is that uh, ground ball over to the pitcher. Corridon throws over to first base Branchfield for the out, one away. Next batter, Larry Doyle, rolls a 14 for 43. Up comes that 18 again for the air. We'll see if uh, Doolin gets another one here. Nope, he's not going to. It's going to wind up being a fly ball this time over to left field to uh, Sherry McGee for the second out. Two outs now at the top of the sixth inning, and C. Simor comes up, and uh, si Simor hits a uh, fly ball over to uh, Titus in right field. It's a 54 roll for a 45 result, and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. First man up is Titus, and he rolls a 51 for an 8. That's a single against Joe McGinnity, who's a C. And uh, that puts John Titus on first base. And we're not going to make the same mistake we did in that, uh, last time. We're not hitting and running here. We're just going to play it normal. Sherry McGee now rolls a 53, which is, as you might have guessed by now, the air number. 53 turns into a hit by pitch. And uh, this hit by pitch is uh, one of those oddities of uh, sort of national pastime slash APA based games in that uh, that's definitely not just an error number. That's also an unusual result number. A pretty interesting discussion recently on the uh, Skeetersoft forums about potentially um, randomizing some of these error numbers. One of the reasons why I'm not necessarily for that, and you can go over to the forums on Delphi and uh, see the uh, discussion if you so care. One of the reasons why I'm not necessarily for it is because of those hit-by-pitch numbers. We want to make sure those go to the right batters. Um, anyway, uh, there's going to be an update here pretty soon to the NP3 program that is going to make the question moot. Here comes Kitty Bransfield now. Rolls a 12 for a 25. That's a double play roll. And it is a double play. It goes over to Bridwell at uh, short, makes the uh, flip over to Doyle at second, and on to first base uh, for Tenney. And you probably wonder why that uh, E didn't come up. Well, it's because we got a 20 here. Doyle's only got a 7 at second base. The 20 is a second base roll. But uh, it's possible that that's not actually an error number on the boards. At any rate, Osborne comes up, running on third is John Titus, two outs here, bottom of the sixth inning. 
He rolls a 66. And that's going to send him into double columns. And uh, we get an 11 from that. And that's the second home run of the ball game for the Phillies. And, man, they're all over Joe McGinnity here. Once again, as I go over the fence, as an inside-the-park home run, you can decide. You can close your eyes right now unless you're driving. And uh, you can make that decision on your own. As for me, I'm going to go up to Mickey Doolin next. And I'm thinking about how long McGinnity's got. Doolin rolls a 54 for a 45, a little fly out to Donlin. He's got to be in on it, and we go to the top of the seventh. Boy, this game hasn't been close at all. My apologies. Our Devlin now hits a uh, 54 for a 45. There's a fly ball out to Titus in right field, first out, and we're underway. Uh, next roll for Fred Tenney is a 14 for a 43, and uh, that's going to bring up that little E. It's a 19, which means that the third baseman is in question. It's a 23 is the roll, and that turns out to not involve the uh, air, and instead it's a fly out to left field for the second out. So you do notice that these little E rolls, these possible air rolls, have nothing to do with the actual player result, just sort of the mechanics. It's a simple game. It's a simple mechanic. The focus here really is on kind of speed and increasing the fun, but you do have to sort of like close your eyes and, you know, uh, suspend sort of uh, reality for a second to make it work. The next roll for Al Bridwell is a 62 for a 12. That's a little ground ball over to uh, first base, and uh, it's uh, Branchfield. He's got to hit Cordon covering, and that is the third out of the inning. And on comes Red Dewan, the catcher for Philadelphia. Rolls a 22 for a 7. Gets a base hit on McGinnity, who's now a D. McGinnity's a D now because uh, he's uh, given up so many runs. And that's kind of the way that this fatigue system works here for uh, Skeetersoft. It's not a game definitely at all like uh, Diamond Mine Baseball where uh, you've got to worry about how many pitches you've thrown and all that stuff. That doesn't happen here. Um, Corridon is coming up, and uh, even with a five-run lead, we kind of have to bunt with him because there's not much else he can do. We're going to roll, and it's a 51 for 23, the runner on first base. And uh, I had to wait and see what, what came up because I don't have this one memorized. This little pop-up to McGinnity. He makes the catch on the pop-up bunt and then throws over to Tenney for the double play. And just like that, there are two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Kind of a rare play for you. Next up is Eddie Grant. And uh, Grant rolls a 62. I guess I can look at my camera over here. 62, which is a little ground ball over to Tenney, and he makes the play unassisted. We're up to the top of the eighth inning now, just like that. Told you, a pretty quick game, even with my explanations. And it's Spike Shannon now. Spike Shannon starts this off with a uh, 51 roll. And that's a pop o out over to uh, Grant at third base for the first out. And, uh, boy, the Giants just can't hit today. Next man up is Roger Bresnahan, 32 to 26. That's a little ground ball over to uh, second base. And uh, that is uh, looking up and down here. Knabe, there he is, who makes that play over to Bransfield at first for the second out. And here comes Joe McGinnity. And McGinnity rolls at 55, which is a 9. Normally pretty good for a pitcher, but not when you got a C on the man. That's a pop-up to Grant, and that does that. I'm leaving Joe McGinnity in this game, mostly because there's no real reason to take him out. I know that he's given up a number of runs, but seriously, we're not going to take him out quite yet. Although I do see that Q2, which indicates that he probably should be taken out. He's not the same Joe McGinnity as he was a couple years ago, I suppose. Off is uh, Otto Knabe now here in the bottom of the eighth inning for the Phillies. First rolls a 64 for a 13 strike three. And McGinnity gets him out of there. And McGinnity's trying to prove to me that he can still do it. And uh, that's the fourth strike out of the game for McGinnity. And here comes uh, John Titus now. Titus rolls an 11 for a zero. And we go double column hunting again. 42 is the second roll. That's going to be a double. Now, McGinnity has an M, and an M is one of those ratings that means that he can potentially give up an extra home run here. Two things have to happen, right? And you'll see this here. We have to roll between an 11 and a 13, first of all, for the John Titus range. Don't ask me exactly how that works. I don't remember. And then next is we have to roll within the National League increased home run range. Um, the John Titus range, I think, is something that was added on specifically for the computer game. But those of you who are freaks about this game, sort of like I am, can correct me if I'm wrong. Ends up being a double for John Titus. He's over at second base with one out and Sherry McGee up. And boy, this Philadelphia middle of the lineup sure has come alive today. I'll tell you what. McGee rolls a 65 for a 35, and that's going to first bring up a potential error. He rolls a 16, so it is going to be an error. This time it's an error on the left fielder. And that is uh, Shannon uh, who makes the air. McGee winds up on first base, and that will score the sixth run of the game for the Phillies, who are blowing the Giants apart. And uh, this time I'm starting to think we may actually need to make a pitching change because McGinnity um, is not fooling anybody. We could always put Red Ames out there. 
I'm trying to see who else we have. Probably Bill. We'll put uh, Bill uh, Malarkey out there. What a great last name. So Bill Malarkey, hopefully he's not going to throw up a bunch of Malarkey here. And uh, he will uh, be the uh, pitcher to face uh, Kitty Bransfield. Not a good game there for uh, Joe McGinnity, unfortunately. And uh, Bransfield gets a 15 roll. This will be an 11. I was about to say that's going to be a single. Send McGee over to third base because Bransfield has that 11. That means he steals second automatically when Fred Osborne is up there. Uh, two and one the count here if you really want to uh, pay attention to that. Um, that slows you down a little bit, though. We won't do too much of that here. Next man up is Fred Osborne. Rolls a 62 for a 12, and that's a strikeout with runners in second and third. That is the second out of the inning. No need to worry about any sort of little E rolls or anything when you strike out. And next man up is Mickey Doolin, who also strikes out. Same thing as before. Also rolls a 62 for a 12, and that's a strikeout. Those 12s are always the bane of the APA players. Uh, they really will take a good time and uh, make it into a bad time. <laughs> And uh, next man up is uh, Mike Donlin. He rolls a 13 for a 40. Usually you see a 14 on 13. So a 40 means that uh, he doesn't have as many walks as uh, some of the other players. Roll again for Mike Donlin. That's a 51 for a 7. And there's his base hit. And that brings up Larry Doyle. Only the third hit of the ball game for the Giants. We're not going to run Mike Donlin, though. I know we could. Not down by six runs in the top of the ninth. Doyle, of course, rolls a six, uh, 16 for a 26. Goes over to second base to Knabe, who makes the flip over to Doolin at uh, short. Um, unfortunately, they're not able to get the double play, though, because Donlin broke that up. Uh, one out now here in the top of the ninth inning. So I see more up. Seymour rolls a 33 for a 7. That's a base hit, sending Doyle to third base, and uh, Seymour goes to first. And up comes Art Devlin, heart of the Giants' order. Not too worried yet, though. Corridon is now a D, despite the fact that he's not given up any runs, and it's because of the way that base hits work and uh, the way that the uh, pitcher um, uh, downgrade system works here in Skeetersoft. I won't explain too much of that to you because it doesn't always come into play. Art Devlin rolls the 61 for a 42, which is a hit by pitcher, and that loads the bases with one out here. We're going to play the infield deep. There's no need to play in. You're up by six. No worries. Fred Tenney comes up, and Tenney rolls. A 31 for a 9, and uh, that's a little single. Advances everybody one base, and it's 6-1 to one New York now. And New York is starting to uh, make some noise. All up comes Al Bridwell, and he rolls a 29. And that is a, uh, a, a fielder's choice as the ball goes back to Corridon, who throws over to the plate quickly to do in to make the out. Everybody else moves up a base. Bridwell is on first base now. Two outs with Spike Shannon coming up. This is the last chance for the Giants. He rolls a 21 for a 30. It's going to be a fly ball over to McGee. And there you have it. And uh, today's game, the Phillies win 6-1. to one, 11 hits for the Phillies, only 5 for the Giants. And uh, not a very well-pitched game there by uh, McGinnity. Um, and uh, not exactly the closest game you'll see in 1908, but it's all right. We have a lot more action coming up for you in the future. So, uh, as always, I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and all of that. And I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.